the sawmill today. It's about 4 p.m. Thought we were going to get a lot of rain today, but it's looking like it's not going to happen. So we got some sawing done here this afternoon anyways. On tap for today, I have one more walnut log already on the bobcat. And uh, we'll go ahead and throw that on the mill first off just to get it out of the way since it's already there waiting to be sawed. And then we'll be moving on to the hemlock that we brought in here just a few weeks ago. And this will be the first time that we've done hemlock on this channel, so I'm looking forward to it. And uh, hemlock is just, it's a soft wood. There's not a lot of fancy grain pattern to it. It's not really sought after for furniture makers, but it's great for barn builders, for, uh, for farmers and ranchers, for fences. And uh, for timber framers, it's good for posts and beams. And that's what we're going to do with it. They average around 14 to 12 foot in length, I believe. Some are a little bit longer, I think. And uh, my goal is to get six by sixes and eight by eights out of the hemlock for uh, some timber framing projects we got going on this month and next month. Remember in the last video we done on the walnut where I talked about the wood being green and showed you guys how green it is right when it comes off the mill. And it's been less than uh, 24 hours since we saw it. And as you can see, this is the color that it ends up being once it comes off the mill. It's some fantastic color here. I just think it's interesting how green that wood is. It comes off the mill and turns this dark color. Change of plans here. I'm really anxious to get into this hemlock. So I threw it on here first and we'll get this one cut up into a beam first off and then we'll do the walnut next. I already got it on the load and arms ready to go. Our total length here on this hemlock is uh, 13 and a half feet, 13 and a half. Now down here on the other end, this is the small end. And uh, one thing here, when you measure timber, you want to measure on the small end when you're figuring in board footage because if you measure that large end, you're not going to come out what you, uh, what you think you're going to have because there's too much taper. So you want to measure off this small end and that way if you come out ahead, well it's a good thing in the end, but if you measure off that large end, you'll never come out ahead on board footage. You'll always be backwards. You'll never, uh, you'll never saw out as much as you think you're going to have. So always measure from the small end. A few guys are just now getting into this stuff and are out there buying logs and timber. Always measure from this small end and make sure you look at both of them and measure both of them to see which one is the smaller end. It's about 12 inches at its widest point, so 13 and a half foot, 12 inch diameter on this hemlock. Anybody here that's new to the channel, I'm curious what this is. Automatic transmission fluid, ATF. That's what Woodmiser recommends to lube up the rail of sawmill, ATF. two slabs cut off and I was doing some wishful thinking when I was hoping for eight by eights out of this. I knew I probably wouldn't get it unless I had a lot of Wayne. Wayne, uh, W-A-N-E -A -A means uh, you've got a solid beam or wood with a little bit of bark showing on it still. It's not really solid. So when we talk about Wayne, that's when you got a little bit of bark left and it's not exactly uh, dimensionally sound. Put it that way. I brought the draw knife with me down here today, so if we have any weighing on these beams, I'm going to go ahead and use the draw knife and start uh, peeling those off. This is not a fancy wood. It's not really a uh, popular wood for woodworkers. 
it's more for uh, building purposes. It's uh, pretty close to pine in appearance. It's got a lot of knots in it. And uh, that's just like knotty pine. Pine has a lot of knots a lot of the times in it. So does uh, cedar as far as that goes. This is a softwood. It's got a very good uh, rating on the wood hardness scale for uh, being a strong wood for building purposes, which is what we're after here today. I like the looks of it. I think it looks good. I wouldn't mind having a few logs like this sawed into boards to maybe make a table with or something. I like the look of it. It reminds me of pine, but out here toward the bark, it's got a darker reddish color. Kind of like a peach to, uh, tint to it. It's pretty unique, actually. I like the looks of it here, but it's really close to pine. And uh, saws up really good. There's not a lot of resin in it. I was expecting it to have a lot of pitch like pine does which builds up on your blade and you don't really run the water on that blade to keep the pitch off of it but it's not really too gummy at all it's turned out pretty good and hemlock one of the biggest uh, cons to it is ring shake and uh, that's when the wood kind of separates on the radial face of a log it separates radially and I'll throw a little picture up here give you guys an idea of what the end grain will look like if you ever find a, a log with ring shake in it but there's no ring shake at all here. I didn't see it in the end grain when I harvested these a few weeks ago and sawed into it. There's no separation. So we got some nice solid wood here. This is going to make some fantastic nice beams here. You can use an axe to do this or even a knife or whatever you got on hand. I like to use a log peeling draw knife. And uh, this is one made by John Neiman. I'll put a link to their website and their YouTube channel in the description below. I think they're known now as the Northman Guild, but they got some fantastic videos on their channel. And if you, ne you ever need some motivation to do work like this, just go watch some of their uh, videos. They're fantastic. This is a log peeling draw knife. And the reason being it's a log peeling draw knife, the spine is on a radius here. It's, you know, a lot of draw knives, the spine is going to be straight. This one right here is curved. That way you can get around and, and go toward the, uh, the natural uh, curvature of the log. That's the reason it's got that curve on there. And uh, these are fantastic tools. They're hand forged over there. And it took about a year to get this thing. I was on the waiting list for a year. I think the waiting list is still about a year for all their tools. But I got their draw knife and a few of their uh, timber framing tools also. Just some fantastic stuff.
This thing is so sharp. Of course, it came sharp as a razor, and I've honed it a few times since then. Holds an edge really well. Even over knots like that right there. It has no trouble just peeling them right over. And uh, that's like a, that is a hand plane smooth finish right there. That's how good this thing cuts. It's fantastic. I gotta be careful sometimes because when I use this thing, I really enjoy using hand tools. And uh, sometimes I go a little bit too far with them because I get carried away and using them and I peel away too much material. Well, it sounds like we're gonna get some thunder here in a few minutes, so I don't know how long this video is gonna be. I have to come back tomorrow and finish up on the wall on it. Don't mind the saw and a little bit of rain, but not in the thunder. It's hard for me to stop using this thing. Like I said before, it's a, it's a very sharp tool. It's a heirloom tool that you'll pass down to your kids when you buy tools like this, and they're just fantastic here to use. And if you want to test your draw knife to see how sharp it is, if you think you got a good edge on it, the best way is to really test it on the end ring. You see, it cuts off like nothing. 